In today's video, can we continue the push against the Antigonids down here in the south, whilst also scoring some victories against the Seleucids up here in the north? Stay tuned to find Hi out. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are continuing our Epirus campaign in RTR Imperium Serectum. Now, last time we took a load of cities, and we have catapulted our income, which is really, really good for us. We've also managed to push the Seleucids back a little bit whilst also having to face, you know, the Adrissians up here in the north too, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but we're doing well. I have already recorded this episode once, guys, just so that you know. Uh, but unfortunately, for some reason, my microphone did not pick up any of my audio at all. So it was just a silent recording just with music in the background, which... Uh, yeah, not ideal, but we are going to be going for it again. Obviously, different things may happen, so there's no point in me mentioning anything that happened in that one. Uh, but in terms of what we're doing, guys, we are going to continue the push down in the south. And we also are waiting for this to be taken. We're going to try and move this army to the north to defend it against the Adrissian. Defenders against the Adrissians too before sending that back for retraining. But without further ado, guys, let's press that in turn. Let's see where we get to. So with Philippoi, let's also enslave Philippoi, I think. No, let's... Let's just simply occupy Philippoi and hopefully they'll be happy once we leave as well. So a few things may have happened that end turn. We'll go through them one by one. First of all, of course, we took Philippoi, which is great. Apparently the walls and everything is damaged, even though we just took it by sieging it out. I guess that makes sense historically. What is the temple that they have here, by the way? Dionysus, that's fantastic. Now... We have had a few things. We'll start with the Adrissians. They have sieged down Bessapara and Philippopolis with some armies, which is a little bit scary. But luckily, this is a pretty decent army that Iphestionas is part of. So we're going to go this way around and try and sneak up on them. First things first, though, we need to get a garrison in there. I wonder whether this guy can get all the way to Philippo. He can. We're going to have to replace him over there. Why is this minus five and a half percent growth, bro? This happened last time as well. <laughs> Apparently minus 10% from build. Ah, but that doesn't give population growth. That only gives 1%. That doesn't give anything either. So damaged buildings, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange. But uh, hopefully that sorts itself out. Otherwise, this city's going to become a ghost town like COD4, my friends. But uh, let's come all the way up here. We're going to go around that way. We're also going to bring a Mython from over there. He does manage to get there, which is fantastic. So that was the first thing. We've addressed that already. The second thing is the Seleucids have attacked Marineo, which is actually something that we did want to happen, of course. Um, these guys don't have any siege equipment. I don't want to lose Tirada, but at the same time, it's two Ronfoy Foroi. They've got no siege equipment at the minute. So what we can do, what I believe we have, is a ship nearby. So let's bring that ship over. Let's get on the ship. And where can we be dropped off? Somewhere in safety, I hope. So let's get dropped off here. We're going to send you back straight for retraining. So yes, I had another question from Andy as well. So Andy Salter, I believe, is his name on... YouTube. Uh, so, great question, Andy, in fact. And any of you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, please do comment them down below. Of course, I'm not perfect. We're not going to do everything perfect. And I'm sure you guys know, especially after watching my uh, Phalangite gameplay, I am especially not perfect with the Phalangite way of life. Because that's what I'm going to call it. It's a way of life, my friends, isn't it? A terrible, terrible, despicable way of life, but a way of life nonetheless. Um, but yeah, Andy did ask me the question as to why I'm sending all of these guys back. Why not just leave a general over here with, and bolster the army with a few mercenaries and then carry on the fight? Well, first things first, with RTR, you don't need to go as fast as vanilla. As you can see, the AI is quite slow. There's a lot of settlements that you have. Like, ultimately, if we lose both of these settlements, even all the way up to Cirrus, 
Does it really matter in the long run? Probably not. And we can do more tactical moves and try and push them back. So going slower doesn't actually bring you any negatives really in the long run. Obviously, the short term, there can be some. Um, and you've got to, you know, tailor yourself to pace, uh, to, to the pace of what you want to go at most of the time. So whether you want to go fast for a certain situation, it all depends on that situation. Secondly, if I left this general here, let's have a look. Let's try and find an example. So we'll find this general, Leo Caris. Look how far he can walk. If I just go with that guy and Brachio Phalangizer, they can walk like nowhere compared to with a general. So by bringing the general with me, we're probably not even, uh, you know, saving any time if I just left the general there with mercenaries. Secondly, mercenaries are very, very expensive and they have really high upkeep costs as well. So by bolstering our armies with mercenaries, apart from the times when we really need to, like here at Maranea, um, you just end up with really messy, messy armies. I mean, my OCD cannot handle it if we just had random mercenaries in there all the time. That would be a little bit annoying. So, um... By doing that, you know, we're spending a lot of money on mercenaries when we really don't need to. We can just retrain these troops all in a turn. And we're going to have a very powerful army left. And yeah, it's not going to be really much of an issue at all. So uh, yeah, that is the reasons why. Um, mainly, the I mean, the main reason, like I would say, is the speed. Oh yeah, the last reason as well, guys, which I haven't said, is safety. I mean, with the amount of enemy armies around this region... Uh, by, you know, carrying our armies all together, we are being a lot safer than we would otherwise. I forgot these guys need to get retrained at Larissa. So we'll send them down to Larissa. So that's kind of gone against my point. But thank you for the question, Andy. That is the reasons why we are not uh, doing that particular strategy. That is a very good strategy, especially when you're blitzing, guys. So, yeah, do bear that in mind. It is, is, it is a great strategy overall. Uh, but for us today, we're not going to be using that. And th those are the reasons why I don't tend to use that strategy when I'm playing RTR. I would use that in uh, vanilla, definitely. But RTR is a slightly different beast. So, yeah, we try try and go a little bit slower. Although we have been blitzing recently quite strongly. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll ignore that. Um, all right, well, what do we want to do over here? We don't have garrisons in some of these settlements. We don't need garrisons in them all. But yeah, it would be nice to have them on the coast because Nosos tends to want to attack us. So the other thing that has happened is that um, Delphoi has been attacked by the Antigonids. And so has Orchomenos, which is, you know, fine. It's quite funny of them to do that. But uh, yeah, I don't really mind losing them both. Orchomenos will be a very good siege to do for us because we've got a decent army in there. So we can uh, push them back quite nicely. We've also had Leonatus come out of age. Ah, yes, Leonatus. So I was going to send you to garrison, say, Sparta, because you are a bit of a manager more than anything. And Sparta, I believe Githion's actually very rich. No, one, isn't one of these really rich? Corinth is in itself. So tell you what, we'll send... Although we are gathering a new army. Hmm... We'll send you to Corinth for now, and then if we need to move that around and get a new general, we will do. Any faction announcements? No, nothing too bad. Actually, there was one there. Someone has dysentery. Who has that? Pyrrhos. Well, Pyrrhos over here has dysentery, so what we need to do is leave him in a settlement for a turn. Um, so let's get into that. We'll auto-resolve that. That's no problem. Trozan, I think, will occupy. We'll occupy most of these settlements down here because... Um, of course, Argos is pretty upset with the amount of population they have already. So by increasing that, we're just going to make them more and more upset. We'll knock that guy out of the way. We are going to wait in Trozan, though, like I said, because we have dysentery. Let's get rid of that stat. Um, actually, let's just check, though, first of all. This has upgraded. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Let's just check, first of all, whether just occupying the city has got rid of that for his men. Let's have a look. Has he got any good, cool traits as well? He's a veteran now. This guy is a veteran of war. He's only 28 as well, Pyrrhos. What a glorious commander. Well supplied. He's got 8 command and 28. He is the new Alexander, it would seem. As in our Alexander, not Alexander the Great. He's fabulously wealthy. Nighttime, famous general. 
Due to his achievements and impressive conquests, this man is known to both friend and foe as a highly skilled leader and is given the appropriate respect by them. Trusty, he's a butcher as well. Oh dear. Uh, impoverished noble family, bloody, heartless ruler, unlucky leader, which gives morale but less command. Been in wars, uh, Stratahorse, Punisher. <laughs> uh, so unsuccessful athlete. Let's have a look. Prudent spoiler. Yeah, they still have dysentery, so we need to wait at least a turn for that to go away. While we're here, let's pop in, say, trying to Aphrodite. What do they have? Dionysus. That's absolutely fine. That, in fact, that's great. Over here, what do we want to build? Probably the sewers. They're a great building as well. And let's knock that guy back and let's carry on going straight through into the next settlement, which will be Megara over here. This will control the route in and out of the Peloponnese. So we will have control over that from now on once we've taken it. That will be glorious. So guys, if you do enjoy the series as well, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Uh, in getting these videos out to more people. So if you are enjoying the series, guys, these long-form videos, then please do like and subscribe. That would be amazing. Right, let's pop the Ambrakiotes in over here in Fenike too. We're actually not far away from being able to get an army. How are we doing up here? We've started getting the Ronfei Foroi. Anyone else we can get? Also, another good comment was about diplomacy. And I am going to get a diplomat, guys, just to show you, like, how fucked our diplomacy is right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> we cannot get alliances with anyone. No one wants to be our friend at all. Everyone hates us. But we might as well keep trying, hey? Especially, like, the score Disky, um, because they st are starting to border us quite heavily now. So I think that's what the Thracian army is going to be about when we get to that point. Let's also make sure we retrain everyone here. Let's pop in... Probably an Athamanian would be the best option in Pella. So let's do that. So we spent a lot of money on retraining. What I'm going to do is build from the bottom now. Not places that are under siege, though. Kythera. So we can build up this region a little bit from where it was. Uh, because we have enslaved a lot of regions over here. Also, this can be an extremely rich area if we want it to be. So let's keep on going with it. Let's get that population growth back up. Aegean in there. Sparta. Let's go for some paved roads. I am Farina all the way up here in the north. Crop rotation would be good. Sophis is a little bit upset, but that's okay. Uh, Damastion up here far north as well. I'm tempted to go with stone walls up here to get it a bit more defensive. Maybe stop the enemy from looking and eyeing it up. Let's go for the crop rotation in Heracleus and TK. Idava, nothing worth building there. Cassandrea out here on the coast is also a very rich settlement. Do we have any corruption here? We have none, so getting law won't actually help. Probably the highways then? They're very expensive though. How much will that bring? It's a very rich settlement, but 100 gold for 10,000. Not exactly worth it, but that is the way the buildings are tiered now. So spending 10,000 is a lot. You know, it's a lot less money now than it used to be on a building, I would say. Uh, but anyway, guys, let's end the turn there, I believe. Because I've rambled on for long enough, as usual. <laughs> but let's end the turn, guys. And let's see where what happens with the Antigonids specifically. And Argos as well. Is there anything we can do about Argos? Hmm. Not particularly. I mean... Like, these areas in the center don't need to be governed by people. These areas on the coast, I would prefer it. Would we be able to, say, leave here as well? I think so. So that's up to 63% now. So there is a chance now that they won't, uh, they won't, um, rebel. But it's a very low chance. <laughs> But anyway, let's end the turn there, guys, and let's get going. And even more has happened on that end turn, guys. The Idrisians have come over this way to attack us this time. Looks like they're running away with that army, the little pussios, uh, which is quite funny. That's fantastic for us, but we have to kind of bounce between the two. But we do have this army ready to go, so that's not a problem. These guys do need their retraining first, though. So let's get them all retrained in here. It looks like we can get new armor 
for those boys, which is fantastic. Where did we have the civil disorder? Sikion over here. Should have put that down to low. That was a mistake on my part. We're not perfect, are we, guys? Not all the time. Um, this area should be happy after the next turn. Dardanicon Freon. That one is just unhappy to be part of our empire, which is fine. And yeah, we're besieged on Argos. Did actually revolt against us. I was wondering. Yeah, I saw that in the end turn, but <laughs> that's okay. That allows us then to exterminate them because that's what we do with rebels, guys, isn't it? Of course, we always exterminate. So let's get all of the good garrison troops in the places. Then look for places where we can replace good garrison troops. So, for example, there's a couple in here that with these mercenary hoplites that are... You know, good units that we want to replace. So, let's get you in there. Let's bring the mercenary hoplite forward. We'll try and do a rolling garrison with the good units. Like these guys, for example, two. Let's move them. They can't actually get there. They will be able to get there in a second, though. Um, but, yeah. Let's move that rebel out the way. Do we go back for Argos? I think not. It doesn't really matter. It's not blocking... The way, because we can get around this way. Do we have ships? That is a question. Oh, yeah. This was what happened. Nossos has attacked us. <laughs> Silly Nossos. Problem with this is I don't want to get keep getting dragged further and further east by these conquests, which is what's happening at the minute. <laughs> I wanted a hard line here. Like, this is fine. This is the land I want. Why do you all want it too? It's my land, please. <laughs> it's my land. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll, we need ships. Oh, there they are. There, I was going to say. So let's bring them round. And we're going to go after a good target, of course, which is Athens for the boys. Oh, you bastard. Fucking hell. Well, I messed that up, didn't I? Uh, but anyway, let's move. Neither of you can actually move far enough. You, I wanted you to go into Corinth as a governor. That means you can then go and garrison one of those. And we have one final garrison, boyo. Could actually move you across with the ships. Let's do that. Like I say, it's not exactly the greatest of tactics to keep a garrison in all the time. But it is the safest, guys, of course. You never know when a rebel army is just going to pop out and take a... Take something and being annoying. Honestly, garrisoning all this land, it's not necessary at all, guys. I could be making more and more money. But it's just safer and it just avoids annoyance, honestly, is the main thing. You never know when just a rebel out of one of these trees is going to come out and go, Ha! That's my land now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just avoids situations like that. And honestly, you know, all of those troops is not too bad for now they haven't moved so what we're going to do we're going to pop you around there you are still under siege do they have siege equipment yes the main thing here is just to try and kill as many of these guys as possible now they do have some very good units in here they've got their thorakitai which are a scary scary unit to be honest so i'm not holding out hope we'll do much but just to damage them a little bit would be enough in this position who is at war there? The Ptolemies with Rhodes. Okay, that's not a problem. Nossos with us, of course. These guys are carrying on training. And we have more of the Agrianian infantry. Now, I do want some spearmen on the flank. So let's pop those guys in there. Let's also remember... Have these guys trained? No. So they're all synced. Let's also remember to keep on training these guys in Leprion. In fact, I'll just... Pop in five. I know it wastes a little bit of money, but it's okay. Now, let's look for anything in here that's really important. No, it's all rebuilding. There wasn't actually much that got done then. So, let's make sure we are continuing to build in Bylazora, though. And I think, the, you know, if we're going for stables in this area, best thing we can do is get a blacksmith over here and potentially more... Oh, we've got a large temple of Aphrodite there. That needs to go. We need to get Dioscuri. Um, so, yeah, we'll go for the temple of Dioscuri instead. That'd be fantastic. And you two are both building. Glorious. Now, let's check our areas where we have training going on. So, let's upgrade the Dioscuri there if we can too. Over here, 
as well. Fantastic. That is glorious. And with the rest of our money, let's wait until we've done this battle. Because we've been building a lot this episode. So let's go. So what do we have here? We have a pretty skirmishery army, but it does have a good backbone of troops. This guy just has two units of cavalry. I think we're going to have to be very slow and meticulous here, guys. So let's see what we can do. On to battle, my friends. Very good. So as we're going now, guys, we're going to have a very fat formation that is protected heavily. Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> I didn't even notice those guys coming in there. Where's that other unit? They're there. Well, goodbye. Guys, go. That would be nice. Half of them are still wandering that way somehow. They've not even spotted them. But yeah, we're going to have a very fat formation, basically to protect the flanks from all their skirmishes and cav. Of course, remember, the Thracians are very fast, guys. So, uh, you know, we've got to do our best uh, as we can to keep a solid formation and not have disjointed lines. That's when individual routes happen. And that's when mass routes will happen afterwards. So, normally, I don't like to leave cavalry in the fight. But what we're going to do is leave these guys in the fight. Because I think we'll be able to, you know, kill them pretty easily. Especially with the army we have. Um, they're going to bring some Hippocontistae across. That's not a problem. And I wanted to just mention about the Phalangites guys as well. So, I haven't... Many comments, guys. Many comments from people all about the Phalangites, right? Lots of different opinions. I have been told by senior mods on one hand that guard mode is the way to go. And I've been told by senior mods on the other hand that to take the Phalangites off guard mode and put attack orders in. Now, it seems like both of those tactics are correct. <laughs> so, nobody is wrong here. But what it seems like the cases, for example. So, with guard mode, what they tend to do is just stand there and not really attack much. So, they're there more as a holding force, I would say, in guard mode, rather than a sort of a offensive force, you might say. Um, so, yeah, they seem to be good in guard mode, and they hold their position, they hold their stance, they do a really good job of that and holding the enemy. Now, in non-guard mode, off-guard mode, should we say, they seem to be a much more attacking force and tend to do, from what I've seen and from what everyone says, much more damage overall. So, they will do a lot more damage, but there is the risk when you do that, that they do crazy things like face the wrong way, start, like, facing sideways, breaking the line, and getting into worse positions. So, for now, for me... I think, honestly, the best thing for us is guard mode and to keep it like that for now. Because, as you've seen, guys, my tactics are hammer and anvil and hammer and anvil pretty much only. <laughs> Not only, but that is the main tactic that we tend to use. So, you know, keeping them in guard mode, that suits my play style. And it suits the way that we should, uh, you know, try to play with these units as well. Now, if that Hippocontistae comes close, we're going to ruffle stomp them. As well, guys, if you haven't seen any of my challenge videos recently, I would recommend doing that. There's Acragas, there's Priene and Paphlagonia. So do check those out. They are good fun. Here we go, guys. Into the battle then. So let's get our guys forward. They're taking a bit of a battering from their missile men already, which is a little bit annoying. But what can you do? Don't need to worry about the long spearmen. It's mainly the Ronfoforoi. Where are they? They're at the back there. Let's let's attack them. Let's bring these guys forward too. Same with these guys. They are mainly there to protect the flanks. So here we go. We're just trying to keep a nice straight line. We're going to tank a few shots from their guys to start with. But honestly, I don't mind that as long as we keep a solid formation here. We might get outflanked slightly. But I think we'll be okay. We've just got to keep that solid formation. I'm going to keep my cavalry in the back for now as well. And we're just going to try and engage them. We've not taken a huge amount of losses initially, which is good. But here they go. Here they go with the long spearmen. They should not be too much of a worry to deal with. There we go. And what we're going to do, bring these guys to the flanks. Uh, the archers are still there as well, which is good. You guys are on phalanx, right? Yeah, so while they're doing that, let's uh, come forward slightly. And let's bring these guys up here to try and uh, chase off those 
boyos. There we go. So I'm going to hold those flanks there. You guys should be firing your javis now, which should be good. There we go. We've got Akontistai and Thracian run for Floroi there too. See, in the guard mode, they're holding very nicely indeed. They don't seem to do a huge amount of damage, but doing quite well nonetheless. There we go. You should be facing the long spearmen there, guys. So let's come forward again slightly. We're going to take this very conservatively, like I say, because at the end of the day, this is a Thracian roster. And they are a very scary roster to contend with. We've had many issues with them in the past, haven't we? All their sort of, uh, you know, guys. So let's keep on chasing that cavalry if we can. Chasing cavalry, I realize, is not a great uh, thing to want to do. Let's try and kill this Thurio Foroy while we're in here too. You guys come forward. Don't need. I don't want to break the lines here in the center. Let's see if we can go and deal with their general then. Okay, looks like their general is uh, running away. That's fine. We'll surround these Dracian long spearmen then, no problem. And you guys protect the flanks. Here come the Hippocontistai. Turn, boys, turn. There we go. We managed to actually turn in time for that. That's glorious. Are they withdrawing? I don't know what they're doing, actually. Oh, they're chasing this 304. Right, that's very strange, but okay. You do you, AI. You do you. So where is this 304? Right? Oh, they have just been battered by missiles. But I think it's time to get our cavalry into the action. I don't think they can wait for too much longer. But there goes our, cav uh, our 304 right breaking. I'm going to get this Light Lancer out of the fight. They do tend to come back quite a bit, which is very annoying. But oh well. Have you guys finished fighting them? That's that's a bodyguard, so let's see what we can do against that. Here we go. Let's see if we can break this whole flank here. If we can, we can then turn there, turn and face them on the other side. We should be able to break long spearmen, no problem. There we go. Wavering. Come on, boys. There we go. Now straight into the back of the slingers. Let's go. And then this side of the uh, of the boys. Let's have a look at what infantry we have here. So we've got those boys there. Let's turn to face the enemy. You guys get there. Athamanians come behind too. And there we go. We're good. Let's try and snipe that general if we can. So the Thracian Slingers should break. That's no problem. The general is just stood there. That's fine. You guys chase them down. In fact, Athamanians, let's go. Can't really, uh, can't really afford to lose... Too many men to the rest of the army. So let's bring them up slightly. Cavalry seems to be doing quite a good job of chasing them down anyway. There we go. That's a general dead. Like I say, we don't need to really destroy this full army like we normally like to. Oh, God. What is this? The Romfe Foroi. Go, 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 guys. Go. Turn. Oh, this guy is still in the uh, in the fight here. Taking an bat absolute battering. But let's go kill those guys there. And uh, let's come forward with those boys. What is that? Agrianian infantry. See how quick the Thracians are. It's kind of insane, honestly. <laughs> like how quickly they managed to get around our units there. It's kind of cool, honestly. I, I quite like it. <laughs> like I love Thracian rosters. They're so fun to use. Right, let's kill them. Let's uh, get one of you up there. And is it worth getting anyone else with these guys? No. Nope. I think that's fine. You guys then come after them. And a glorious victory has come, my friends. Well, a glorious victory, my friends. We should have taken them out if they killed both of their generals, but I don't think we did. But a glorious victory nonetheless. Let's get off this battlefield. Well, there we go, guys. Glorious. And this guy now has a Thracian aristocrat. What influence? One command when commanding infantry and one command when fighting the Thracians. Nice. That is good because Ifestionas doesn't actually have that many command stars. Now, we could come around and kill this army, which is pretty much all cavalry. Um, <laughs> don't know. Strange army, that. Strange, very strange army. Do these guys have any rams? No. Well, I'm tempted to just come, like, here and just see what they do rather than attack them. I mean, we can't even attack them now. We don't have the movement. So, yeah, I'm just tempted to do that. See what happens in there. And, yes, glorious. Well, let's do all our building, guys. 
We are building in most places, which is good. Let's go from the middle this time. We have a, we kind of go from the bottom or the top, but never the middle. So let's go with the middle. Pelion, let's get some um, some nice markets in place. Adesia, Botisha, you're there. Um, let's get that crop rotation. Thessalonica. Let's definitely go for the dockyard. Let's see how much money that was bring. Yes, 700. Well, not 700, 600 and a little bit. That's very good indeed. Lycnidos. Let's have a look. Probably the Agora as well. And then Oinidai. You can get a shrine to Dioscuri just for the banter. <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's end the turn there. Oh, we did we get another diplomat. We've got three diplomats now. This guy. So this is the new guy we got. Um, so I kind of want to talk to the Greek city-states. Uh, where? Oh, we can talk to them down south, can't we? Where was he coming from? Was it here? Yep. We can talk to them there. So what I'm thinking of doing is once we've taken this... We talk to them, give them that, or maybe give them Marinea once the, once the siege is over. And then we won't be bordering them at all. I would also like to talk to the generic Thracians if they still exist. But I do not see any land that they have. <laughs> maybe they've got some land up in the north. But yeah, the generic Thracians, if we take like... Oh, there they are. There's some there. So if we take these settlements here, for example, all in the north here, I am willing to just gift that to the generic Thracians as a buffer state, and then we'll be secure on this border. Then we'll just have to worry about the Scordisci over here. So, yeah, that is uh, that is what we're thinking. In terms of the other diplomat, Damasos, you're there, yep. Permenion is up here. Let's talk to the Adrissians. Do you want a ceasefire? No, very demanding. I'll show you guys, like... Like, no one wants an alliance with us apart from Heraclea Pontic, who gave it to us. But if we offer alliance to anyone, they're just like, nah, <laughs> no thank you. Um, even this guy over here, like, if we talk to Syracuse, very demanding. <laughs> so, no, no one wants an alliance, honestly. The, like, we, we have no ability to do any diplomacy. That, that, that is basically it. If a faction declares war on us, we've either got to fight it out or wait for anything to happen that might be slightly different. Um, I'm willing to auto-resolve that, honestly. 66, that's not a problem at all. Mm, in Megara, though, we can actually start enslaving again, so that's not a problem. And then let's go straight for the Piraeus. Let's do that. We got one of these guys can actually go into Corinth now. We're going to put you in Megara for a turn. And then we're going to swap you around. That will... Oh, Kokira's upgraded. That's fine. We'll do that next turn. But that's basically blocked them off from coming into the Peloponnese now, which is very nice indeed. I just can't wait to mop up them. Like, looking at them now, like, looks scary. But really, is it scary, guys? Not really, I would say. Not really. Also, do the GCS want an alliance? That would be something. No, even though the fact that they're at war with the Antigonids, they do not want an alliance. Oh, it's because they're allied with the Seleucids, it would seem. Huh. Well, anyway, let's end the turn there, guys. So, it looks like Marinea is finally being sieged down. Glorious. Now, I don't think we're going to win this, obviously, guys. But let's play it anyway, just to do as much damage as possible uh, as we can do to these fools. So the main thing here is trying to destroy the ram with fire arrows. If we don't do that, we're screwed, guys. So let's hope that we do. There we go. Ram's destroyed. Now try and fire at that. We're going to keep you on guard mode too. Don't think we'll destroy the siege tower, but that's not really too much of a worry. These guys should be firing their jabbies. What do they have? Thorakitai. Ah, yeah. I think Thorakitai manning the uh, manning the old uh, ladders is going to be a bit too much for us. I don't think it's really going to make much difference for us. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try and surround them, though, of course. So if we can, like, get there, that would be good so we can kill them as they come off the walls. You guys... Okay, you are actually able to fire at that uh, siege tower now. That's good. But, yeah, Thorakitai, let's ignore that siege tower and just fire at them instead. I think that's going to be a lot more powerful. 
Let's do that. These guys are going to come up onto the walls to attack this Thorakitai when we get chance. These guys have fired all their jabbies now, so they're just going to be there to protect the gates. As soon as the gates fall, guys, we are done. But the main thing is just trying to kill as many as possible here. So, yeah, these uh, Thorakitai are insanely powerful. Even the really good Peloponnesian Hoplites are really, really struggling. Look at these guys. They've killed nearly half of this unit. And they've hardly lost any men. And that's including the javelins that were thrown at them. If you guys can try and push against them, that would be good. Like, go? Like, maybe go? Like, don't just let them walk away, guys. They're not, they're not exactly rushing away, are they? Uh, but yeah, there's no way we beat that Thorakitai, uh, unfortunately. The archers are still firing, though. They're still doing damage, which is obviously great for us. Um, so, yeah, as long as we kill a few of these men, it's better than nothing, right, guys? Isn't it? It's better than nothing. And there we go. Our whole right flank has crumbled. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're just going to speed this up. But, yeah, there's nothing really we can do at this point. How many have we killed, though? That's our general dead. How many have we killed? I mean, 200. That's not bad. I mean, we will have lost more than we killed, but... 200 is nothing to sniff at, guys, especially against Thorakitai. So, not a bad result at all, really, when you consider it. And that's 200 less Seleucids we're going to have to kill later down the line, isn't it? So, we've had another civil result, revolt, Dardanicon, up here. Just a little bit annoying, honestly. Uh, what's in this army? It's actually quite a decent army, isn't it? Uh, are we recruiting anything in Stoby? I mean, the Hippogontistai are fine. Let's also make sure we're going straight on to that. Uh, Stimbara isn't a recruitment hub. Um, uh, two more turns for that. Three more turns for that one. And how many do we have? Oh, we've not got much. I was thinking about sending a relieving force, but... Yeah, we don't have much to deal with it, do we? Um... So, that's fine. We just need our our army. We need five units, don't we? So, let's go with them. Let's uh, join up with the general. Get in there. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, it was five. So, you guys go across. There we go. Fantastic. Can we get off that? And let's try and go and relieve that siege that the bloody Athenians are blocking, as usual. <laughs> Thank you, Athens. Always appreciated your help. <laughs> in this matter. Let's bring those guys down. Let's start getting another army together because I think like in the south, we've kind of got things under control. But yeah, in the north, we're scrambling a little bit, I would say. But let's, uh, what have we got there? Let's also resolve that. 60 men again. Not a problem. Let's enslave the Piraeus. And where do we go now? Probably straight on to Tanagra. And, yeah, that should be good. They're still happy in Piraeus as well, which is great. It's actually a fantastic city. Problem is, building recruitment hubs down here, guys, is really not worth it. Like, what's the point of doing it? Because we don't really need them. If we are going to go to war for Crete, then that's the only thing I can think of where it might be necessary. But, yeah, it's not really that necessary either, is it? Do we have uh, these available? We do. We do actually have a Thurio 4, a Cav available, which would be a good little garrison. Um, so I'm thinking... Let's... I mean, these guys, they can only go to Megara. They can't get to the Piraeus because of the rebels, which is good for us. Um, they can't get to either of these either, so it's not really necessary to have a garrison here. Need more garrison troops, guys. Get out of the port. Apparently, you can't get on if you're in the port. So, let's just get them in there, just in case. You never know. You never know. And we're still being besieged in about 4 million settlements. Who are the Antigonids? Oh, it's still Orchomenos. They do have enough siege equipment now, so I'm wondering why they are just waiting. Let's queue these in, in here and Korkira. That is good that Korkira has grown now as well. That's fine. Philippopolis is now really upset. And do you know the reason why, guys? Because of the goddamn spies of the Adrissians. So, do we have... Oh, we have some assass assassins, don't we? Assassins? 
No, we don't. Huh. Just sworn we had. Did we have assassins? Did they die? Maybe they did. Um. But let's get one of these spies at least. That's quite a useful spy, honestly. This spy. Let's send them into Philippopolis. And they should hopefully be able to allow the kicking out of that fool over there. We did build a recruitment, uh, a recruitment hub here, but there is no... Yeah, apparently we can't recruit anything from... Oh, it's damaged, isn't it? Yeah, it would be nice to start recruiting some more. So let's go for a second level in there. I know it's quite expensive, but that will allow us to recruit those Bessie swordsmen when we want to. Which is pretty darn good. Stoby, right, fantastic Stoby. Yeah, we built that already. Good. Stoby's a little bit upset, but it's not rioted yet. So that's fine. We've moved on down here. We've got the Siege of Athens to do at some point. Let's also gather these troops. And I think that's one round of recruitment done. So let's go around and make sure that we are popping in all our recruitment where we need to. Let's go. And Larissa, I think we've got enough Thessalians. Well, let's just go for one more. Yeah, we've got loads. So let's go for some more Ambrakiotes. Actually, more Ambrakiotes and more... Athamanians, and then up in Pella, let's go for some more Athamanians too. Glorious, 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 glorious. You guys are going after them, and we have this little battle to do as well. How many turns left on that? Four turns. Hmm. Interesting choices here. I really don't want to have to fight that. <laughs> In an offensive battle. That's one of the worst armies you could ever imagine to fight in an offensive battle. <laughs> so, I'm willing to just chill in this spot for a little bit. I mean, if they decide to siege down the settlement, we'll be able to help. So, that's the main thing. Up here in the north, I don't expect us to beat that back. So we're going to lose that, and we're going to lose this one. We do have very spread out lands in the north. This is why the idea of the buffer state would be really good. Imagine if we had, like, a buffer state all across the north of those, um, of the generic Thracians. Where did we say they were? They're over there. But we need to conquer the land first. That's, that's the real thing. Let's go talk to some other people, see if... Oh, yeah, I remember these guys were so strong. So let's just keep... Com let's just come down south and see whether we can talk to, say, maybe Byzantium, something like that. Um, And, yeah, I think we're pretty much good on this turn. So let's end the turn there, guys. Actually, yeah, I'll do the building off camera this time, guys. So I'll see you after the end turn. Ah, yes. The Siege of Orchomenos. They have... Quite a lot of troops, guys. Where are they both coming in from? Well, we'll be able to see when we get on the map. But yeah, quite a lot of troops. Let's see what siege equipment they have and let's see whether we can really cheese it. So let's get into the battle, guys. So the town square is one of these town squares, which is quite good for us, honestly. Um... Whether we can beat them or not is a different question, but the main thing is just to try and take out as many of them as possible, isn't it? So, we're going to leave the missile men up on the walls over here, because they haven't got many men. Um, they may even get that ram destroyed. If they do, that would be amazing. So, what I might actually do is sacrifice these guys... To try and destroy that ram. I'm going to group all of you guys together. And that should really help on this side at least. And then on the other side. Where they have all their siege equipment. Yeah. There's not much I really want to do there. What I am going to. We're going to keep our cavalry inside. Because we have learned from our last few mistakes. Where we did have a bit of an issue with the cavalry. Going to have one good unit there. And then let's go on to the other side with the other unit. You guys there. You're actually on the town square, which is fantastic. And then we just need to fill out this gap with uh, with phalangites in guard mode. 18 men. Not really going to do much, are you? Uh, and hope that we have enough to just hold them. 
So, like, over this side, then, all we have is, like, a couple of units left to do this with. It depends also where they go. I think this side is a bit weaker because of all the different amounts of troops. So, yeah, group you guys. Group you guys. Where are you? You're just stood there. Let's just use you sacrificially up here to, like, hold the walls or, or try and bait them into, into something crazy. Let's keep you on fire at will. Are you guys all on fire at will? You are. Fantastic. Well, let's see how this goes, guys. This is going to be very interesting. First things first is to allow that ram into range. So we've got to get it in range of our towers first. So let's speed it up slightly. Okay, no, 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 no. Not Prodromoy. Not Prodromoy, please. Not Prodromoy. Anyone but Prodromoy. God damn it. There, they're getting peppered by Javis now, which is fine. Not the target I had in mind, though. If you can just not route for a second, that would be great. So please just get to that ram while it's in range. No, they didn't. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, they're coming through. Maybe the ram will get destroyed anyway, but I guess we'll see, guys. Ah, the ram did get destroyed on this side. That's glorious. Well, uh, that's actually really good. We might be able to hold this army up for ages then. Not ages, but long enough, you know, long enough. You guys get there as well. You guys come through. In fact, I would like you to get all the way through to there, if possible, before they get on the walls. On this side, yeah, we're less, uh, less... Oh, the ram did actually die as well. Wow. They're going to open the gates very quickly, though, but I think we've still done the right thing because... They can't really do... Like, the Chalka Speeders are not going to fight well on the walls. Sorry, the Ambrachiotes are not going to fight well on the walls at all. So, uh, yeah. What is this? Thurio Foroi? So, we should be okay for a little while. And I'm hoping this army just stands there and just keeps feeding men into this melee up here. Also, looking at it, looks like they're probably going to use this way slightly more. So, we might pull one of these units back off here. To maybe fill out this gap some more there to just hold them. But let's see. We'll do that for now and let's see how it goes. So the men on the walls have fallen, guys. And they are coming through. Luckily, though, we are still shooting at them from some of the towers on the walls. Although they did kind of take so much siege equipment that they have taken a lot of the towers. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But there are still some on our side firing away. Which is at least good for us, you know, getting a few free kills in the meantime. Well, here we go, guys. Let's see how they do against this wall of pikes. We've got Thessalian cavalry coming first, which is a little bit scary. We do have our cavalry on hand to counter charge if they try and do what they did last time and just crazily push their way through. Um, which I'm assuming they're going to try and do with their cavalry at least. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. On this side, we don't have much going on, so we might have to drag some men off. But at this moment in time, looks like we're doing quite well holding off that Thessalian cavalry. The Tarantines are just waiting. But yeah, let's speed this up. We don't need to watch everything here, especially. Oh, we don't want to be taking, like, just losses there from the cavalry for no reason. There we go. The Wall of Pikes seems to be doing quite well, especially against the Cav. I'm just worried about their mass. You know, if they have a lot of mass, they're going to be able to just push through. But there we go. Look at that. <laughs> glorious killing, guys. <laughs> glorious, glorious. I love the way they send their cavalry in first. Is there genuinely anyone coming this way? Like what? Like two units? Well, let's uh, let's change this slightly. You guys go there. I'm going to get you guys to come up this way. And we're going to get you to... Uh, you know, protect that side because it seems like every single, every single unit is coming this way, guys. And they seem to be holding all right so far. I just don't want, like, the collective mass to just push through, especially through this front bit. So if we could get you, yeah, get in position. I'm going to get them lined up perfectly or, or perfectly enough and then walk them in rather than run them in so they don't disrupt the formation too much. Get into your phalanx formation, guys. And then we'll, we'll set you slightly back so they've got that double line of phalanx if they get inside the phalanx of this first line or 
first and second line, whatever. So maybe just like that. There we go, guys. Get in there. And once you're in... Yeah, can you get in formation, guys, would be good. Like I told you to. <laughs> like there, that would be good. No, don't do that. That's silly. Whatever that is, that is silly. <laughs> but <laughs> but okay. We'll ignore it for now. We'll ignore it for now. I think they're going to be okay once they get... There we go. That's better. Now they'll be in the phalanx formation. And if this is the killing fields, guys, this is crazy. They've, they're down to 63% of their troops. We might even hold out the timer here unless they do the crazy push through, which I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating, guys. This is crazy. Well, I don't want to, you know, have any famous last words here, but this is insane, guys. Down to 47% of the army now. Look at this pike wall. Can they get through this pike wall? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Look at the fields of dead on here. This is absolutely insane. And they're still funneling more and more troops in. A lot of it, this is the, the troops from over there, though. So it's all cavalry. We've still got some slingers. We do have a Halka speeders there. So they will have their own pike units. But they look like they might be the last ones in the fight. And if they are, that's going to be glorious for us. It's all just a lot of hoplites. They do have good experience, these guys. But they can't use it if they can't get to our men. That is the point of this. <laughs> all the shit I talked on phalangites. And this is their perfect situation. I'm not saying we're going to win, guys. There's still a chance that we won't. Uh, still a good chance that we won't. They still have a 1,000 men compared to our 400. But there's a good chance we kill... Well, we've killed a 1,000 already. There's a good chance to get down to like 300, 400 men. That would be insane. Have they got anyone coming around this way now? No, I mean, even if we, if we wanted to, we could charge them in the back with our cavalry like we did. But I think... To do that properly this time, we should probably wait until they are uh, they're all in the fight. Is that a Chalka Speeders? Yeah, but there's only 34 of them. So that shouldn't be too much of a worry. But yeah, this is this is crazy. <laughs> this is so fun. It's just I'm just watching this. <laughs> just watching the chaos and you. In fact, I'm gonna turn the uh, banners off so we can see it better. And I'm gonna speed it up and probably uh, keep this as a compilation in for you guys as well. So we're having to move a few more men across from this side. Don't think they've got anyone that is actually coming around this side. Where are those guys? Oh, they're over here, so that's fine. Um, yeah, because this corner has been doing the majority of the fighting. These guys have just held strong. These guys, because of the, the way I've angled it here, these guys are just kind of like poking much more. So they have crumbled not crumbled but they have uh struggled a little bit so we're gonna stick them in there we're gonna stick the phalanx down and if we could get you there guys that'd be amazing just to you can see these little gaps mainly made by cavalry honestly just it's kind of like when a square breaks in napoleonic warfare like if there's one gap then everyone can rush in and destroy you but if there's no gap then you're absolutely fine um and you know you should dominate the enemy so, yeah, they're still funneling more troops in. So, yeah, what is this, though? Archers and slingers. Um, looks like that Chalka Speeders. Let me just put the banners back on so we can see. Yeah, what is this? Just, like, archers and slingers in Uzonoi? I think our Thessalians can deal with that. So, it may be time to go for the, uh, the back charge, guys. So, let's get them round and let's see what we can do. Here we go, guys. On the road to the mass route. <laughs> Let's go. They do have this unit that's very spread out. I've told my guys to attack them, but it looks like they don't want to. So let's come through. Let's kill these two units. And then we'll try and mop up these Greek slingers. And then we'll charge in the back. They have brought the Halka Speeders in now. So if they actually were in Phalanx, they would have a bit of a chance. But because of the way that this fight is going, they are not in Phalanx, which... Should be pretty good for us. We do need to be wary over here because a lot of these towers 
are theirs, specifically that one. So, yeah, I think, though, Athasalian should still be good enough to deal with this. Let's speed it up. There we go, and let's go. After those Greek archers, I think we'll be able to route them, especially seeing as I think their general is dead now. Let's go bang. Should be a good route there. Very nice. Let's kill this Uzonoi too. And then let's come back through. And then let's see if we can mop up these guys over here. Why are they routing to? They're going to get killed by a lot of... Uh... Okay, let's try and break these guys at least. Here they go. There we go, boys. There we go. Let's kill a load of them. Kill them all. Right. Well, it's time, I think, now to, uh, to stand here. Looks like they've ended the timer, but if we can get this off. Two minutes. Two minutes, guys. A mass route here. Bang. Let's go. Did we route anyone? No, they're still eager. It's because of the Hulker Speeders at the back. If we could mass route them all. Two minutes. Let's come back. One more charge, guys. One more charge. That's all we need. One more charge for glory, my friends. One more charge for glory. Let's hope it's a good one. Here we go. Mass route time, maybe. There we go. Come on. Come on. Let's kill them. I'm just going to leave the Thessalians in there to just do the job. If we can mass route anyone. Looks like they are routing somewhere. They're still eager, though, the Chalka Speeders. That's the problem here. But if we could get into all of these guys. Go, go, go. Go, guys, go. Go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we ran out of time. <laughs> we ran out of time. <laughs> what a glorious battle. Screenshot of that, my friends. Screenshot of that. 1,800 casualties with an 800-man army. Oh, wow. That was, that was fun. <laughs> Look at this. Like, 19 soldiers, 136 kills, 139 kills. You can see the ones, like, on the side really did a lot of damage. Some of them were just standing back, but that double line did an absolute load. 16 soldiers, 139 kills. The MVP there. Wow. That is glorious. I'm hoping... I'm not sure we've killed enough to kill both of their armies, but a glorious victory nonetheless, my friends. Back onto the campaign map. So the Adrissians are going to take this settlement. So let's auto-resolve that. It is going to get messy up here in the north, like I said. But yeah... Like I say, we, we don't need to be crazy, like take crazy amounts of, um, you know, go crazy about losing a few of these really unvaluable settlements. That, uh, that uh, Thracian army is going to be the army for up here to defeat the Thracians themselves, beat them at their own game. Uh, Nossos is just being a dickhead, as usual. Great, thanks, Nossos. Uh, we've got a candidate for adoption. He's ignorant and charismatic, faithful. I think we need more generals, don't we? Where was he? Anchises. He's over here. Let's have a look at Anchises. He is confident commander. I mean, he's quite old. Oh, he really... Yeah. He's not good. He's careless. Yeah, he's, he's really, really not good for uh, being in a city looking at him. So, I think he can be our next general. And Kesey's the angry. Uh, I am assuming that's what he's going to be called eventually. But let's get an army together. Let's get that army together in a second. We've got this army up here. Where were we going? We were going to relieve the siege over there. So let's do that. Am I bothered about Portalia? Not really. It's just if they continue to keep coming into our lands here. Especially, oh my god. Look at the Seleucids there. It's not great. Um, but yeah, also the Antigonids have besieged down now Pactos. So we don't want to allow them much time to like just keep much. What, what are you doing here, Heracleopontica? Is there any need, bro? <laughs> like, what are you doing? We've got these two sieges to do as well, which we will do probably next episode. In fact, let's uh, auto-resolve that one because we're not going to lose many men there. Let's uh, occupy Tanagra because it's quite happy. Let's destroy this down here. Wow, what a good settlement. Really good settlement. Temple of Nike, that's for recruitment. So that's okay for now. We'll leave it in there for now. And let's just go for Temple of Aphrodite there to keep them happy. And we'll use that army to relieve that siege there. That's taken out two of those armies though. And really the Antigonids look 
pretty broken, don't they, guys? They do not look healthy, which is great for us. You guys, I want you to go... Oh, come on, rebels, really? Just hiding in the mountains with two generals' bodyguards. Let's have a look at this, though. Civil disorder, Philippopolis still... Now, Paktos is fine now, although they did damage the blacksmith. Imbros over here. Yeah, Imbros is just a constant problem. Should keep on making Marina happy, though. We could even make it richer, like getting a ship right, but probably not the best option for us. Let's just go through all our besiegements. So, Tirada, yeah, we're going to relieve that probably next episode. Now, Paktos 2. Megara over here. Yeah, that's fine. And Sirius, yeah, is no longer besieged. Good. Right, then. Anything interesting on here? Pontus was at war with um, Byzantium, which is kind of weird. But, yeah, Seleucids are now at war with Atropatine. That's good for us. Hopefully, that pushes some of those guys back. Pyrrhus of Epirus now has some good little retinues, a food taster, and a bodyguard. So, apparently, people have been trying to assassinate him, I would say. And he has survived. So, that is good for us, at least. Um, let's have a look. Lots more paved roads being built. So, let's have a look. Anything? Yeah, it's all rebuilding, really. Um, yep. Yeah. And we are continuing to recruit. How about in Philippopolis? Let's retrain them. Let's see if we can recruit some of those slingers. Because they're not bad slingers at all, I'd say. Um, and let's uh, train some more spies, if possible. How about over here? Do we have... Yeah, let's train some more spies. Get some more spies up in these regions and, and maybe into our cities. This is not ideal, <laughs> I've got to say. But I might pop Ifestionas in the city when we, uh, when we get to it. It's a minor city, so it's going to have the same uh, layout as the last one. We will... Will that auto-resolve be kind to us? 108. Not bad. Um, where do we want to go? I mean, Pautali would be nice to take. And then we could go up here. And maybe hit some of their heartlands. But then we're bordering the Tribali. And we're so far north at that point. We don't have that defensive line of hills. This is just open territory. Anyone could be bordering us. We could be at war with anyone. So honestly, best thing we can do is maybe take a stand on the road against the Seleucids. If they want to keep coming down this way. I don't think the AI is going to be clever enough to attack us with two two armies, but I guess we'll find out, guys. <laughs> Let's get this army together, though, first. Yes. Yes. So, you guys into there. Let's get five Thessalians. No, I said go into there, please. Five Thessalians, please. Then let's go with Ambrakios. I wonder how many we have. You guys get in there, too. Let's go with no more in there, actually. Two more here. We don't have any Thurio Foroi. That's a little bit concerning, but that's fine. Two Athamanians. Any more Athamanians? I mean, honestly, we could just go with a big cavalry army. We've got a Thurio Foroi there. Got these guys. You guys go in there. Hmm, how's that looking? And then one more Thurio Foroi, and then we'll be good. Right, we need to recruit a Thurio Foroi then. Well, we can do that. Down south in Thermon while we're waiting. And then we should also recruit some more garrison troops in there. So I'm thinking we go around this way. And we should have more movement points next time anyway. So that'll be good. In terms of our garrisons, are we safe on the coast apart from here? We are for now. Not great, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I think we're good, guys. Let's do one last batch of building, but I'll do that after the fact off camera, guys. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe. Like I say, it really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next episode.